and we are now live. Hi guys, Leah, it's so good to have you here. Tara, thank you for joining. And we have our guest speaker, but we'll talk about her in about three minutes. I'm Dr. Priscilla. I am your Anchors of Hope coach for writers. I'm so excited that this is week seven of eight. And really week seven, I think week six was our week that we really should have wrapped things up, got things, you know, pretty much ready to go from print to post, publish, print to publish. But it is what it is. We are where we are because this is exactly where we're supposed to be at the very moment that we are here. Hello, Francisca. It's good to see you always, always, Hi, everyone. always. <laughs> so I am so excited about our guest. This is our first guest. And she is a number one best seller. So, uh, those of you who may be in some of the tribes that she's in, I want you to say welcome to Pamela. She's going to be here. We will be here for an hour. And hopefully we can get some of some insight into what it is to be a an accomplished number one best-selling author and then whatever else that may come to mind i have a few questions but before i do that with enough said i'm going to just say i'm so happy that you're here pamela i'd like for you to go ahead and introduce yourself the way that you want us to receive you and we are so happy that you're here Yay. so everyone here's pamela garrison well, I'm already feeling the love, you know, <laughs> the love and the warm welcome. Thank you guys for having me. So as you said, yes, my name is Pamela Garrison. I am an author, speaker, coach, and I'm also known as your bubble therapist. I can't leave that out. <laughs> yeah. Bubble therapist. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Full of fun. So. Okay. Tell me what you want to know. So, so guys, jump in whenever you feel like it. I'll try to moderate with, you know, so it won't be such dead space. So Pamela, our therapist, our bubble, bubble solution bubble. therapist, what was it that made you feel that this had to come out? What was your inspiration for bubble therapy? So bubble therapy was actually birthed from my first book. Identity Your Crisis. My first book. My first book. Oh, <laughs> yes. What? Get out. Okay. So, okay. my first book, <laughs> Identity oh. Crisis Rediscover You. Okay. Uh, I wrote last year. It's a year old. And wonderful. In that book, Identity Crisis Rediscover You, I was on a quest to rediscover who I was, to rediscover what my purpose was. Okay. Because life had hit me so hard. I was like in the twilight zone. I mm -hmm. kid you not. I didn't know if I was coming, going, which, to, which direction to travel in. Mm -hmm. And I lost sight of me and who God called me to be. Amen. I was so preoccupied with everybody else's business, mm -hmm. even though they were in my family, but their business was my business. And okay. I had forgot about me. And you know how you live your life wondering when is somebody going to recognize you? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not going to recognize you until you recognize you. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Amen. So in yeah. that book, I tell people, we teach people how to treat us. Yes. It's not their fault. You yes, did yes. this. So I had to take responsibility for my actions. And then I had to go, now what are you going to do to change? Mm. It became necessary to go back to my roots, which is writing. I've always been a writer. I'm that person that keeps a journal. Or I always had a book in my hand. And I said, now when did life get so busy, you can't pick up a book? That was your favorite pastime. Mm. So... On that journey, I decided that it was time for me to be me. So the best thing I did was to pick up my pen again. And I said, not only am I going to do it and write it, I'm, I've always been that teacher as well. I want to teach somebody along the way. So in the first book, 
I wrote a chapter on a relaxation technique that I use. And the uh -huh. title of that chapter was I Blow Bubbles. Okay. I, okay. Everything I wrote in that book, that's the one thing that really stuck with people. Uh -huh. What do you mean you blow bubbles? So Bubble Solutions is directly related. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was birthed from the first book. Okay. So, so hold that, hold that right there, Pamela. Yes. Because I want I want Francisca and Tara yes. to hear this. Yes. These anthologies that you're writing, yes. they can hold their own from the chapter of your first book. So don't be have that thought you're compelled to put everything into this right. anthology and it's this thick. Have one this size, this size, this size. Okay, go ahead. Right. Okay. Because and, and this is another one of those nice uh, tips that I picked up. Mm -hmm. Your book is the beginning of the conversation. Mm. It is the key that opens the that. doors. Mm -hmm. It is not for you to put everything in the book because you don't know whose path you're going to encounter. And there's always going to be some things that, hey, you read the book, but let me tell you what's not in the book. Here's wow. what I couldn't say. Okay. But the book gives you the open door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote that, but here's what I wanted to say. Absolutely. It's what I yes. put in yes. for the world's yes. ears, but I'm here to tell it to you. Yes, yes. Because you understand what I've been through. But this is that part that you can't say. That's always that part that you, I'm going to tell the world, but I'm not telling you all my dirt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, right? But so you just, gonna, ladies, the body. You that, yes, yes. Give her yep. the love. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. yes, yes. So, so you and don't I, have to put it all in the book. It is the key to open the door to the conversation. And what she's saying I hear is she's opening the doors to conversations and coins. You hear me? Yes. Coins. Yes. So that is amazing. Um, so, you, so you're opening the coin conversation? <laughs> 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 well, for me, Tara, what that means to me, if she has a limited amount of information that has intrigued me in her book and I want to know more, I'm going to contact her and then she's going to tell me her fee. Like, this is what I usually get, but because you contacted me in whatever, let's say in April or May, mm -hmm. I'm discounting whatever. Right. So my right. session is going to be for a guaranteed number of 15 people, mm -hmm. my fee is, I don't know, $400. Mm -hmm. However, I will have books that I will autograph. Those are the coins that I'm speaking of. You have to, right. now Absolutely. I was thinking for that conversation, you know, she would really do it for free, or at least right. I would do it for free. But since they were asking me, mm -hmm. you know, and then if it's an organization, I think, this is me thinking about what I want to do. If it's an organization that well, we don't really have a budget, then I'm going to say they they must purchase at least twenty books. I'll right. give two books away. I would do it for free anyway. But if they can commit to buying twenty books at whatever price I have set, it's a win-win situation. It's a win-win. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. I'm so excited, Pamela. I didn't know you had two books. I knew you had yes, one. Yes, <laughs> Ah. So well, this, I saw you today and you were just so excited. I think it was today or 14 hours ago that your books arrived. Like you were like, oh. last night and today. It was yeah. last night because I went in OYB community because ah. I was so excited. I said, I know who I can talk to. So <laughs> <laughs> I went in the OYB community yeah. and expressed all that excitement. Yeah. And then this morning, first thing I posted was, hey, my books came. Yeah. And I put it in every group that I could think of. I was like, look, because I'm really excited because I said it never gets old to see your books come in the box, the mm -hmm. stuff with your name on it. So the second book, <laughs> it's the second one, uh, yeah. Bubble Solutions, like I said, came out of the first one. So I had to go into greater detail because mm -hmm. more people wanted to know mm -hmm. what is bubble therapy, where does it come from? Because like I said, from that one conversation, of I blow bubbles came more questions, came more requests. And How what is, so what are you talking about? So I put it in a book. Uh -huh. I explain what it is. I explain what I'm talking about. I'm explaining why it's going to help you get to another level. Okay. I'm explaining how it helps you 
you know, recenter yourself so that you can stay in a state or an attitude of gratitude and leave all that other junk alone so you can make better decisions and get to your awesome. next breakthrough. Awesome. So that's, that's Bubble Solutions does that. Okay. All right. So guys, it's open for you all too to also ask questions of our guests. And um, all right, so let, let's- so I, have a, so I have a question. Have a question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This, is, this is Tara, I think. Yes, yeah, Tara. Hi, Hi Tara. Congratulations again. Thank you. So um, one of the questions I have, when you wrote your first, you wrote your first book, how long ago was it? It was a year. A year ago. So mm -hmm. what was your process and what, um, what did you do when you feel, uh, when you felt like you had enough or, and you know, how did you go about organizing your thoughts? Well, I did buy into a program. I okay. mean, that's, that's just real. I did go through kid marketing. I did the nine weeks bestsellers course. It was a gift from me to me. Mm -hmm. It was something that I've always wanted to do. And I told myself, you know, if it was for any other member of your family, you will find a way to get the money. Mm -hmm. I need you to do that for you. So, yeah. <laughs> which is what I did. So when I got that, when I went in the program, I had the biggest writer's block ever in my life. I could not. One hand up, two like, hands up. I, because when I realized, okay, you in this dream now. Now it has to happen in nine weeks. No pressure. Nine weeks. It got to happen. And so I did follow, you know, they had the outline and, you know, tell you what we're going to do each week. But I felt behind. Mm -hmm. I was like, everybody's getting this but me. So see one wrong focus. I'm focusing on everybody else's progress. Right. <laughs> Hands right. Up. Hands up. Not on what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And I struggled. I couldn't put a sentence together. I couldn't put anything together. But and this is a writer. Remember? And I'm a writer. <laughs> and I've been writer. writing and I was stuck. I mean to tears stuck. And I felt like I was having a breakdown. Mm. But I understood I was breaking through to another right. level. Mm. So the yeah, thing man. I did, I stayed in action. And even though I couldn't write, I got in that support group and I said, look, here's what's happening. Every time I pick up the pen, I cry. I can't even think of a sentence. I can't do this. And I told them what was I outed myself so that I wouldn't be by myself going, mm -hmm. you're the only one that can't get it together. Because, you know, the negative self-talk is coming. It's yeah. going to get in there. Tara? Yes, ma'am. I, I owned my negative self. Look, I think in our last call. And I had yeah. Said, I, yeah. What's in darkness must be brought to light yeah, so yes, that yes. it can be healed. Yes, yes. You cannot get healed from what you're trying to hide. Yes, so yes. if you're hiding these feelings and hiding these things that you're going through, then you're not going to get your breakthrough that you need. Wow, powerful. Right? Powerful. It's going to continue to weigh you down and it's designed to keep you stagnant in the position where you're at. Mm -hmm. yes. So anytime, and I, and I have spoken this, anytime you're doing something great or you're trying to get to another level, it's going to require you to become something that you're not in your current mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. yes. And I like to use the Transformers. If anybody ever watched the movie, the cartoons, mm -hmm. whenever... Yes. <laughs> Whenever Optimus Prime is going to do something, he got to transform. He's not going to stay on the four wheels. They got to transform <laughs> yes, yes. in yes. order to become victorious. Okay. And it's the same thing in our life or in our faith. You know, you can't stay in the same state you're in. You oh. can transform and become what God has called you to be you see. in order to get where you need to yes. be. Yes. Because it's a finished work. We just have to have the faith and believe that we got everything we need in us because mm -hmm. it's only fear that paralyzes us. Mm -hmm. So I went through some things emotionally. I couldn't write. I couldn't think. And then one day it just broke through and it just started flowing like rivers of living water. I can't, and did, because I tell people, I say, I can't write like that. I got to wait till it's downloaded. I got to wait until this. So then I learned this. You have to put yourself in a place to be successful. Mm -hmm. It's not going to download if you're surrounded by chaos. 
Oh. <laughs> It's not going to be downloaded if you surrounded by chaos. If you have a lot of chaos and confusion, or like I had, I had a hater in the house. Mm. <laughs> mm. So you have someone that's close to you that's not supporting you. Yes, and yes. All, even though they lips say, I want you to be successful, but everything they're doing is tearing down everything you've done. Mm -hmm. There's a hater in the house. Mm. So you have to put yourself in a position to be successful. So I got in my car and I went and drove to Barnes and Nobles where books live. And I sat at one of those tables. Wow. So peace and quiet. And there's nothing but books around me to remind me that I'm creating one of those things. Mm -hmm. wow. So I had to move from my current situation temporarily. So I can go work on my future situation. Amazing. Yeah. Because it was coming at me. That's awesome. And you get to visualize yourself in a place where your book is going to be yes. amidst, amongst those. That's yes. awesome. Awesome. Yes. Um, I, I like dream. that. I like that. Um, we can come back to some questions, but I want to show you guys something. I didn't know she had one book. I mean, two books. So I only have one book up that I want to screen share. I am so proud of you. Thank you. Um, Pamela. So I'm let sorry. me know when you all can see the screen. I'm on Amazon Prime. Oh, Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is Pamela's book. This is all that I knew. Uh huh. So Pamela is going to, I'm going to click on it and uh -huh. well, no, that, that part is good too, but I, I think I've already clicked on it. I want you to I want you, you to talk about that part where you can't blow bubbles angry. <laughs> I want I want to you to explain the the dynamics of of the bottom of the page. What we're looking at down here, down here. Oh, here. How many we pages did How many pages did your book have, Pamela? So this book have. Let me see. You should say it there. Wait. Uh, file size. Yeah, thirty eight pages. Okay, is that correct? No. Okay. So the book have 64 pages. Okay. Now, so, to be, to so be honest with you, my first book, mm -hmm. the first book was only 35 pages. Okay. Ladies, ladies, hear me. Hear me when I said I gave you as an example 100 pages because mm -hmm. that was what, in my mind, I wanted my, I wanted my name, I wanted my designation on the back mm -hmm. of my book, doctor. Mm -hmm. And they told me that I had to have 118 pages or something. Right. So if you look at the back of my book, it doesn't have it because I'm like, I don't have anything more to write. So I okay. could have stopped writing long before I got to 100 pages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just trying to get my designation on the back. Okay. But it is okay. not on the back because I was not going to, I couldn't think of another thing. Because that you didn't have the, the spine. That's fine. I couldn't think of another thing. So you can see he has 64, which is probably 38 times two. Right. It would be uh, 64. So I want you to understand what I was trying to say to you. Don't, don't buy into what I said. I was just telling you what I did. Because you know you have gone to the bookstore and you've seen a little book. But it wasn't one that you wrote. Right. All right. So but it's the content, you it, know. But yeah, it has mess? to be some content. Right. And those of you who whose papers I've read intimately, you have enough content. You have enough content to have several books that you want to expand on. And just so I'm just going to pick Tara out for the moment. Tara, I mm -hmm. I was saying to you that you want to not give so much credit to so many other authors because mm -hmm. you want people to come to you. Yes. And uh, so in your next book, it is going to be Tara, not all of those people that you were mentioning. They are worthy of being mentioned. But if you hear some other people talk about our coach, that's how we refer to her. We refer to her as our coach because we want you to come to us to get Correct. what she poured into us. Right. right. Mention her a little, but not consistently because it becomes our own story. Right. Okay. All right. So isn't that lovely that you can see 
um, your image here. Mm -hmm. So Pamela, I want you to tell us a little bit about your book and I'm going to ask each of you to support this cause and go to here and give a review. Now, this is in no way. Oh, you put your picture on it. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is by no way an indication that only two people have read the book. No. But the more people that can see, because I am a person that I like to see, well, what does someone else think about this mm -hmm. book? And so I wrote something about the book. Okay, so you all consider being kind enough after she gives you a little bit more into the questions and, and rate it because you yeah. want the same thing when you print your book. You want someone to review it, give you reviews. And remember when we started out, I said, what do you want people to say about your book? Mm -hmm. You may have to pass this on to a brother, sister, cousin, uncle, aunt, or whatever okay right. after reading my book you can say something like this because yeah. that's what you wanted that person to get out of that okay before i leave here any questions about this this is just amazing i love it i love the coloring i love Thank the you. look at the bubble look at the bb it's like i can see it as a bubble without right. even seeing it it's a bubble right. bubble right. And that's what I was after, so I'm glad you can see that. Yeah, you know, the bees need to be capital. All the bees need to be capital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of the bees are capital. That's I love it. Yeah. I love it. And the, and your mm. smile, your smile. You look like you are a person that could give me some therapy. <laughs> it's subtle. I really like it. I do. I do. And the colors they match the the print, the purple. Now purple is the color for Alzheimer's. I, so mm -hmm. it's a type of therapy it's a type of a calmness it's mm -hmm. like lavender -ish. okay anyway all right yeah. any questions before i go back from go back to on that on that page do you want to show them the rankings and how to read the rankings well we'll do that no, we'll yet. do that we'll do that in their last class because okay you know that's I have part, a question that's part of our cover. secret sauce okay <laughs> so one of the um, questions i have is on your um on your uh, your cover page. So did you go through a lot of iterations to finally get to one that you liked or you settled in pretty quickly? I often tell people that I do things by accident. <laughs> Look, accident to me, but known to God, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I basically was, I took the picture that you see behind me from my banner. I love it. That's the same photo. And um, I was trying to make a flyer, actually. And I said, oh, let me try this. And I put it on the background with some water. And I just started creating some things. And then I liked the color scheme. I said, well, I kind of like that. And it just kind of, to be honest with you, it just fell together. And I was like, I really like the way that looks. So I think I'll keep it, mm -hmm. and so, which is what I did. So it was a flyer first. And then I just, I was using um, Canva. And I was like, well, let me see, how can I make it a book cover? What's the formatting? And, you know, and it just kind of worked out. Um, okay. I was proud of me because I did that one myself. Mm -hmm. My first book, my daughter, you know, those young people who know how to manipulate stuff. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and my first try, she was like, no, mom, no, that's not it. You just send it to me, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and she didn't tell me what she did. She said, just send it to me. Right, I right. Did. And I was like, oh, I like that. Okay, we'll keep that. So, uh, but this one, I, I just, you know, I got brave. I said, I can't break it. Let me see what I can put together. And it just came together real nice. It really um, is. I really yeah. love it. Very nice. Yeah, I love it too. Um, and, I like, and I like the way that it's, it's, it's just situated right beside you as we're looking at you today. Because right. I like, how do you yeah. do that? Because I was like, that's my alter ego over there. There she is. <laughs> I know either your, your video is going to show or your picture is going to show. I'm like, how did she do that? I was like, I love it. When I, when I need to motivate myself, I interview her. Okay. <laughs> you guys hear that? Because, because like I said, I'm just me. And I, um, and I go through those mood swings. And I go through the, the blocks and 
what are you doing? Because I sometimes I just feel, I lose my way. I'd be like, okay, now what was I doing? Okay. So I'm a, I start writing things down. I don't have any of the pages. I have like the post-it notes in poster size. <laughs> I stick them on the wall. Okay. okay. And because I'm a visual person. Right. And I put, okay, things to do. Did you get the Zoom call done? Did you get this done? Did you do that? And I go down that checklist. Okay. And I'll do it for each thing that I'm committed to do. And I, I like the stickies because I can just stick it on the wall and it's right there. Absolutely. And when I'm done with it, I can fold it away and put it up. Right. And then I can go back over, here's what you accomplished. Mm -hmm. And it helps me stay on track. Mm -hmm. So did you yeah. use, did you, um, you said you used the nine week program for your first, for your first book. Correct. Did you do, and what about your second book? Did you do that? The second book, I know, I now know the formula. Mm -hmm. I now know the process. And so what we, what you want to have in your mind, mm -hmm. the word, it's the words, it's a system. It is a system. When you have a system, when you learn the system that Lisa Nichols teaches you, like we know the system, we, we haven't learned it yet, but we know the system of the valley. We know right. here, go down and get out of the valley. Right. So it's a system right. like that. And there are many different ways to get from point A to, to point, point B right. or That's from A right. to Z. But I say start from A and get to B. Right. And then don't look at all of a to Z, you know, because you it's going to overwhelm you. Become overwhelmed. And Tara, mm -hmm. Francisca, I know Michelle, Leah, and even myself. If I I did mine in four weeks, if she had given me forty weeks, I'd be oh my god, forty weeks is not enough. You all are going eight weeks. Oh my god, I need more time. The more time you have, the more time you procrastinate. And that's true. So you have enough time to get what you need done. Michelle, hey, welcome, welcome. I'm glad that you were able to join us today. Hey, everybody. So we, have, we have the bestseller, Pamela Garrison, not just one book, but two. I didn't yeah. know about two. <laughs> about well, book it's, very, one. it's very nice to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. I've got a little sinus infection thing going here. And I'm oh. in and I'm in my jammies. <laughs> and I hope you have some hot tea or something going with that. To help. Abs absolutely. I went to right? the doctor today. And so uh, I fed, uh, I set my clock. And of course, you know, I fell asleep. And then uh, I, I woke up. I was like, my alarm didn't go off. So oh. I didn't set the alarm. But anyway, I'm here. I yeah. do have one question. Yes. Um, I felt that with this process, um, well, I started out, I had a book in mind, but this book is, is about the book of Genesis, which, you know, spans 50 chapters <laughs> in one book. So I, there was no way that I could get that done in six weeks. So I changed uh, my title and I kind of changed my perspective, but I'm, I'm using the story of creation. And so uh, <clears throat> I guess the main thing I wanted to ask is, uh, the title of my book is When God Speaks, things happen and when we speak god's words things happen too. so um I mean, what did you say michelle when we speak what when we speak what happens when we speak god's words things happen too mm -hmm. so the premise is that when we learn the bible when we learn specific scriptures mm -hmm. we can utilize those scriptures to build our faith uh, we can use those scriptures to speak to given situations we can use the scriptures to um, learn the bible i didn't go into specifics on the different ways we can study the bible but i did talk about um because i've been a bible teacher i give advice on the types of bibles that new beginners or intermediates need i taught i gave stories in regards to every chapter title that i have i only have five chapters <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty much comfortable with that. I'm going back and I'm critiquing that. But because I've never written a book, <laughs> um, maybe it's doubt or fear. I don't know. But at any rate, um, I'm not afraid to tell my story, but my story really Mark, did it hit a whole lot. Huh? She's at a ball game. She's at a football oh, game. I'm sorry. I forgot to put you on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, 
the point that I'm trying to make is I've shared one particular part of my story and that was betrayal and betrayal is what moved me into trusting God. You know, whenever you have a broken heart, um, it takes you time to learn how to trust, uh, not only to trust other people, but to trust God. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell the story from a perspective of each facet that I cover why those are important lessons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And overall at the end, I discuss how that once you learn the scripture, you can then apply that scripture to your life and get results. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my overall theme of it. Um, so I guess my main question is just from that general format that I gave you, do you, you think I got a good story here going? I mean, I know you haven't read anything and uh, I haven't shared yet because I was really Well, before, to before, before, Pamela, before Pamela answers that, I want to give you my perspective as your first coach. Okay. You know, there's a way where mothers changes a baby's diaper one way and then when she hires someone else to come in, like, well, why did you put in a, a tri-corner pampers? My child has never done it that way. Uh -huh. So with you being just two weeks away, if I almost know what Pamela might say, but this is what I want to say first, okay. so Pamela can tell you. I hear a lot of stories in what you've just said. If this is your book and you talked about betrayal, my father was a minister. He's passed now, but he is a minister. I don't know, was, is a minister. And if we lived that Bible every single day, those dishes weren't clean and there's a Bible scripture for it. <laughs> there is a punishment for it. And it becomes the valley. It becomes the high. You know, I gave you all this. We have a nice house, a nice yard. You have nice clothes, relatively speaking. But in spite of all that, we were punished because we failed. And these are some of the punishments. You find the scripture that is relevant to whatever the type of behavior that you had, then you come back out of it and talk about the value of that scripture and how someone who is reading your book is going to benefit from whatever it is that you got. It may not serve their purpose, but it is your book. It is about your book. And you talked about when God speaks, to me, that is that could be a book in itself, when God speaks. And then you give me some examples of God said in the beginning, I don't know when he said it, but don't eat of this apple. And that is, that is, you know, us sneaking out of the house. I never did, but my sister did. She climbed out the window, don't tell. She was in the garden of evil because she was going to guess what God told her to do. Right. My sister became pregnant. Had she not sneaked out of the house, she probably wouldn't be pregnant at 16. You know what I'm saying? So that is a story. That's her story. But I'm just trying to show you how these stories become, you know, too many. You've got coins in what you have even said just now. The coins there, like another story, another book, another, okay. another workbook, blah, 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 blah. And what is going to expand your book, whether it's 28 pages or 280 pages, is the way that you describe the Garden of Sin. You know, it started out, for me, we, you know, the pastor's children kind of dress nice because we had to be on the front row. And how did that make me feel? I hadn't got to the sin part, but you know how did, this is Lisa telling my story how did it make me feel to be dressed and sitting this way in the front row? The expectation was too high. Like, you've got to be a goody two-shoes. I don't want to be good. There's no fun in being good. You know, it's horrible. That kind of thing. Now, Pamela, <laughs> that is what I wanted to share with you, Michelle. Okay, that, well, let me tell you the, the chapters that I have, so that might help give some clarity there. The okay. first one is learn God's word. Um, so I open up, I talk about um, the book of Genesis, I give a history on it, and then I use, I talk about the, the seven days of creation. I do not go into 
chapters two and chapter three. I'm going to save that for the other book. Okay. Um, so I just tell the story uh, on each day. And then I have, like you, I use sticky notes for everything. And so in my book, sticky notes are there as a, a, a topic uh, to, to remind them about the topic or to remind them about a specific verse. And so I talk about the learning God's word, why it's important. I shared examples from the Bible. I use King James ver version of that. Um, and then um, I, I tell a story. And then I talked about in the next chapter, you know, finding, finding a Bible study and, you know, buying the right book and coming to Bible study and not getting your questions answered. Um, because there's so Michelle, an let's go back to the first book. Let's go back to chapter one. What uh -huh. is your What is your high point? Where's the valley? And when it, what is it that you brought me out? You should be able to do that in two minutes speaking. Okay. What is, uh, what is the high point? And and you know maybe in the beginning God created the earth. Yay! That's that's great. When did you go down into the valley? With what? Whom? Or well, I told the, the first chapter is about God speaking. And, and, and I emphasize what the results from were from when he spoke each time. Where's the valley? Who's okay. results? That one, I didn't really so much give valleys and results, so I may have to go back and, and do something with that. Okay. I, okay. That I won't, was more I like won't, my, it I was won't interrupt to, you. That it was to tell the story because even though we think people know the Bible, they do not. They do not know the creation story. They know bits and pieces. They don't know the whole story. So <clears throat> I wanted to tell the story and I wanted to emphasize a point about what God spoke on that, on those, in, on the seven days. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one. The next chapter is learn God's word. And I talk about, you know, how, how you need, you need to purchase your own Bible. Um, you need to uh, understand why it's important to study. Um, I talked about why would someone need to purchase their own Bible? Because I understand why. I understand why, but what 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 rationale did you give in your book? Well, just like with any other subject that you want to learn, you need you need a manual. You need something to give you directions and guidance. The King James Version Bible is a scholarly Bible. It was written by um, Shakespeare and a whole lot of other people came together to write the King James Bible. It it <clears throat> it. They tried to do, uh, they tried to give some Hebrewic background, but with that, they mixed it with the English language. And so it loses a, a lot of the intentional meaning that's found in a Hebrew Bible. But the King James Version Bible is scholarly, meaning that it's a college elevated written Bible. Mm -hmm. And if you're just now being introduced to the Bible for the first time, you're just going to Bible study, that is not the Bible for you. <laughs> there are other Bibles that you should be purchasing because you are a beginner. You're trying to learn. Okay. Um, and so many churches only believe in using the King James Version Bible. However, I do not. Okay. When I'm teaching my students, I believe that they should learn what God is trying to say as opposed to try to figure out what God's trying to say when they read their King James Version Bible. Mm -hmm. So I try to take as much difficulty out of their studying uh, process and make it as simple as possible. So I suggest getting the Living Bible, the uh, the um, NIV Bible, or the I can't think of the other one. Um, Is King the James Bible? Did you say King? those three are easier to comprehend to get the point of the story that are being uh, shared, and they can read it with uh, uh, with uh, understanding. And then if they have questions, they can come back and ask more intelligent questions as opposed to, I, I, I didn't understand what the whole story was about. And that happens because of the difficulty level, the scholarly level that King James is written in. Yeah, so all, I talk about, all of them are difficult to understand unless you have a teacher that, to me, for me, the Bible is difficult to understand. Well, absolutely, like, because the Bible is not saying written. one thing here and another thing and another thing. No, right. The Bible is not written as any other book. It's not written as a magazine. It's not written as a TV right. show. Right. It's not a storyline. Each There are stories within each book. There are several stories, but they're not always consecutive. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not always, um, uh, they're told from a perspective for you to learn a lesson. 
They're not necessarily towed from us. It, it, you know, in 2001, this happened, and in 2002, this happened. It's not chronological. And so that makes it difficult to understand. Also, the Bible is written, um, well, the New Testament part is written from authors who are answering letters that are written to them. So you only get one side of the conversation. It's just like I came in late, you guys had already started, so I needed to listen before I started asking questions. Why? Right because I missed some information. So the, uh, the New Testament is written from the response of a apostle. And so therefore we don't know the exact questions that were asked. So we can only detect and generalize from the answers that are given what topics he was discussing. So it would be as if I would write Dr. Priscilla a letter. Dr. Priscilla's letter back to me is the only letter that gets exposed put into a book but my letter to her initially is never it's not it's not there and so it's it's a, a one-sided conversation that's being shared in the new testament old testament is is mo mostly historic but again the events are not chronological well so, you know, i don't i i we we can come back and visit that but this is what i hear and i still want pamela to respond to that too on Sunday mornings, when I did go to Sunday school, every Sunday, it seemed that there was a new little book that we received about something in the Bible that was concise enough for me to read Sunday morning, read from the week, and contain it and understand that much. So what is, to me, what you have, it, I'm, it, it's, it seems that it would be a series of, of little books still even though you've got them in chapters, I, I think that you would want me to, because I think you are, I don't know if you're a pastor or you teach Bible something, something, but, in, but for me to, to learn it, it seems that it's going to be a lot of information about just chapter one. Chapter one seems like it's a book to me in the beginning. For me to understand in the beginning, what made... And I'm just thinking of how my son received going to church if he wasn't asleep. You know, the language could not be for him the language that, was, that I read. They need to see the action. They need to see, I don't know, Eve. How does she entice Adam to okay, even... Okay, but I'm not telling that story because that story in and of itself is a <laughs> whole thing by itself. Okay. So when, well, I write my big, when I write my big book, that yeah. will cover them. Okay. In this book, I'm really trying to get people to understand is for beginners. Okay. Is to give them a foundation of right. what they need to do when they're learning the Bible. So well, I still want to read it. I still want okay. to read it, whatever it is that we come up with. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I'm done so, talking, Pamela. All right. Okay. Uh, so, so here's Michelle. Here's my question, because okay. I'm listening to the conversation. Uh -huh. And you just said, I want the book to be a foundation so that beginners can, you know, take away from it. So there's a couple of things I need clarity on because you said, All right. I want to do, I want to talk about the seven days of creation. So what I want to uh -huh. know, and then you said something about, I told my story in it and I told a story of betrayal. So I got lost in how do the seven days of creation relate to your story of betrayal? How do they tie together? Okay, the betrayal part of my story was written closer to the end when I was talking about um, speaking the word by faith and not fear. Okay. Uh, so I told about being betrayed because betrayal will cause you to be fearful. Okay. It will cause you not to trust anyone. It will cause you to um, um, be on guard. And, and it can also cause you to not trust God in every area of your life. So everyone has experienced betrayal. Uh -huh. Everyone. So I picked that story because I wanted something that would connect with people. Okay. That it didn't matter if it was a male or a female. It didn't matter if they were young or they were old. Mm -hmm. that everyone's experienced betrayal and it impacts our lives on how we interact with others. Even, even past beyond what we're raised, our culture, um, our education. If, if fear is a, 
a, if you had a dramatic trauma in your life, it can, it can impact you for your entire life. Mm -hmm. And so I talk about that experience impacting my whole life and impacting my relationship with God and tr learning how to trust him. And so I wanted to give them an example of the importance of that everybody is, has experienced some type of trauma. Um, and so it can impact your race, relationships with your family, with your friends, with associates, as well as when it comes to trusting God. Because we, for me, believing God at the age 63 is easy now. Not easier, just easy. Okay, I want to get make that clear. There's things that come up in your life and it's not easy. However, uh, it, it is a process for people who are beginners or intermediate having relationship with God who are changing their lives, their habits, their lifestyles. So that's why I talked about the portrayal card. Okay, and so I just want to give this wisdom because see what I'm hearing is two different things. You have the story you want to tell about the seven steps and how it relates to real life or if you're going through betrayal or another situation or trauma in your life. That's a book within itself. But then you have all that knowledge. So you have the, the technical part of you're a beginner. You're just reading the Bible. So I'm just going to say this. If I'm a beginner, it is not on you to make the decision on which verses I read because you don't know how the Holy Spirit is going to open up my understanding. So relieve yourself of that pressure. Because I think you're trying to hold all the way. They need to read this and they need to read that. That's somebody else's choice. You have the knowledge. Your assignment is to put the knowledge in the book. But the person who put, pick up the book, that's not your responsibility on how they receive it. Your assignment is to put it there. You understand? You put, it, put the information there in the way in which you're led to put it. But I think you should relieve yourself of how it's going to be received. Because if I never read the Bible in my life, I can pick up the book that you read and in the way in which you instructed to write it and get everything that I need. And if I, I may have never looked at the Bible ever or never been told about it, even though it may be in King James or whichever version you decide to use, but your book is designed for that tribe of people that God has assigned to you. So I think that when you, you think about it so much to where, okay, they need to read this and they need to read that kind, then it takes you off into another, it's just a whole nother avenue that you can go with that because that's a little more on the techno side. And I do hear a series of books. You have a lot of information and it's not going to fit in all one book. So that was, that's why I was asking how it connected because you can do a book on betrayal you can do a book on other topics and right. then use scripture or Bible to, to uh, illustrate how important it is for you to know your scriptures so that when you're going through this, you know and understand that Jesus went through betrayal. You're not different, but he overcame everything in this world so that we can overcome. And yeah. so you would have that to put in a book, sharing your experiences and your knowledge of the word. But you have to uh, get clear clarity on which topic you're going to put in which book, because you have a series going on there, you have a lot of information. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me too. Yeah, there's a lot. It's gonna be good. <laughs> okay. Well, um, thank you for that. Uh, I won't take up any more time because I know everybody else wants to share and have a moment. Okay. Thank so. You. Uh, Francis, Francisca, any questions, any comments, anything that you'd like to add? I know that you said that you had some questions that you that you wanted to ask in session today. So, yeah, I do. There are many of them. My head is full, <laughs> and <laughs> crazy. This book writing—it's really crazy. You guys are crazy for writing books. <laughs> Can we just say that to you? No, but if you see the video of 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 Pamela and her books, and she's just so excited. I get excited. I can't your day, even. Your day is coming too. I know, Pamela. I made a promise to buy Identity Crisis, but I think I've been having my own crisis of writing, trying to write three books, and and so like I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna do a book on race. It's coming, but it's not yet in. So this is my my question. I'm doing Mother Behold Thy Son. I submitted three chapters to Dr. Priscilla. 
I had two more or three more coming. In fact, I had eight chapters <laughs> in this book. And then I said, stop writing. Me, stop, stop, stop writing. Stop writing. No, but I still, I, still need to write. I still need to write. But see, so, what happens is, what happens, Francisca, your one chapter really is seven chapters. Mm. You, it's, it's not like you have to, all of those chapters could be a book. A book you know, by not, itself. Not necessarily all of them, but mm -hmm. when you talk about your experience with, you know, when you were waiting for your dad, for example, and he didn't mm -hmm. show up. I mean, I can just see the life that your dad had established from day one, the relationship mm -hmm. that you had with your dad, mm -hmm. it was impossible for him not to have shown up. You don't mm -hmm. have this in your book, but everything that went through your head, was he in an accident? What happened? Where is mm -hmm. he? And then, mm -hmm. you know, you could just envision him lying there. You did say that someplace else. Mm -hmm. But that in itself is a chapter, or it could be a book. Then you have the story of the, the discord in your family. Mm -hmm. These are teachable moments that, how did that happen? How did mm -hmm. your father take what belonged to, well, however you say it, your mother's dowry, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and divided it equally, but then mm -hmm. when it became his part, you need to explain to me what I don't think disaster is the word. The word that you use was what? What is that? What is that word that you use throughout that mentality? It's like men and dogs, but that's not what I'm looking for. Boys will be it's, boys. It's boys will be boys, but there is a a a, a concept or a mindset in Zimbabwe. It's here in the United States too, but we don't recognize that it where mm -hmm. men tells the woman what to do in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Men mm -hmm. don't tell us what to do, but they really do. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. not as, as obvious as in, as as in Zimb Zimbabwe, yes. because yes. we're gonna call you out. But in the story, as you outlined in the chapter, that mm -hmm. women, even in their own family, the children, son, the sons, the sons can mistreat the mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could be a whole book in itself. Like, how mm -hmm. is that possible? How did you all get to that way? So I could understand more about Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it is in your book. So as Pamela is saying, out of her first book, I guess, people were asking more about the bubbles than anything else, oh, mm -hmm. well, let me, in your case, let me write about this mindset in Zimbabwe where mm -hmm. men are, what is that word? They, entitlement. Entitlement. Entitlement, entitlement. okay. That's what I'm Sense looking for. Entitlement, I used it so many times. I was right, that's what yeah. I was looking for, the word. So that, yeah. there yeah. could be a book on entitlements. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it could be a play on the words, just like Pamela has a play on her words with the bubbles. You know, I immediately see bubbles when I look at the word, oh, I could, I just see it. Entitlements first, I've got the wrong idea. If I saw a book that says entitlement, oh, this is mine. I'm supposed to have it. I know. <laughs> but when you, the way that you've outlined it in your chapter, it's like, oh my gosh, do mm -hmm. people really do that? Yeah, yeah. Like feeling that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah. coming from here, it's not as obvious. So it would be a good read for me to read about Zimbabwe, that mindset. Okay. But that would be another book. Yeah. That's, so yeah. so here's how I'm thinking. Because remember, this was like, I had a first book, My Voice, My Birthright. That was supposed to be my first. Okay. When I got into uh, Lisa's uh, Speak and Write, mm -hmm. they kept asking me your why and what's more urgent. And mm -hmm. what's more urgent wasn't so much, it's everything, but this one was more urgent, Mother Behold Thy Son. Mm -hmm. And why Mother Behold Thy Son, um, I'll explain why I wanted the five chapters. I started with Boys Will, will Be Boys. I want to tell my boy child that you don't treat girls the way I was treated. Mm -hmm. So I told all those stories, like full bouquet, and then you mm -hmm. advised me to cut them. So some of them I'll tell them in one sentence. Mm -hmm. yes. To, to highlight the point that the boys were horrible. And after the book is out, I want to go back to that high school and start okay. teaching the boys. So mother behold, I son, I'm not just writing it. When, when my time is right to go to Zimbabwe, 
I actually want to go and tell the boys in that school because I know it is still happening. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. That was number one. And then number two, my own experience, why uh, the bitter taste of gender equality, inequality, this is not talked about in my family. We fought so much. We fought so fiercely and I had pain in my heart. Book number three. Book number three. Yeah, go number three. Right and well, and let, I'm just let saying this book number three when you yeah, talk more. Okay. So 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 that uh, I'm telling my son because I have my son and my daughter that you are never going to be more important than my girl children and you girl children you you're not like you're at par. Uh-huh. Everything for me for my children is three way. They already know that. So mm-hmm. that's why I was singing with them to drill in the messages. So that's how I'm linking them. Why am I telling this story now? Too much estrogen in the house. Three powerful women, one boy. Mm-hmm. There's a chance that he will be shut down. Mm-hmm. And he won't be himself. So how do we uh, support our sons in an environment where they are powerful women? And when you take it to the global level, level I'm going to the Women and Deliver in Canada, and I'm one of the 50 chosen to represent and I'm saying I want another angle of gender equality. Mm-hmm. I want us to discuss it from the angle of empowering the sons, not mm-hmm. only the daughters, because our sons are getting hashtag me too. Mm-hmm. You know, like here, now that my son is here, I'm more scared for him because I know where he came from and the entitlement and how it may play out, even though I taught him well. Society is busy teaching him other things. Mm-hmm. So, so that's how I'm thinking. And then the next one was the, the, the body. I know you're saying there are books. Yes, they could be all five books. The other one is um, the temple of the Lord. You are the temple of the Lord. My son said it at nine years old when we saw a prostitute. And, and he, he asked me that question, mom, why is that woman making money out of the temple of the Lord? So I'm writing to him and I'm reminding him that if you know that your body is the temple, from Mm -hmm. remember that message from your nine-year-old self but then I also tell about why I was staying in an area which had those kind of people because I was poor so that those are the links for me and And then that's your valley you live there because you don't have to stay there and you're going to bring us out because when you talk about what your son is now the your daughters they have risen to whatever Yes, so in the end, I'll do that. So, so that was why I was saying, for me, I, have, uh, I could make books out of them, so I'll give snippets, but these are necessary uh, stories, maybe not in depth, to be known so that... Right, and they're you know, not. You didn't, you didn't go all in. Yeah. That's what I was saying. You don't have to tell me mm-hmm. all of that. You yeah. know, just give me some information so that if I'm interested, I'm going to ask for another book, yes. or I'm going to ask yes. you to come and speak. Yes. But if you try to tell me all of it. thinking, and the final one, maybe yeah, now because I had eight, I think I want to cut them to five. The final one is really about how do we, uh, because I don't want to end with just my stories. What is the value? What can we begin to do as mothers and sons? So let's, let's jettison toxic masculinity and how, what, what does that look like in, in, in the practical sense? We, we want to undo the language. Boys will be boys, boys will be accountable. Boys will be boys, boys will be responsible. How does that look like? How do you relate with girls? Girls are, boys are smarter than girls. That's a lie. You know, the truth lie, truth lie method that we were thinking. So I had that. So I want to teach the sons now in this book. And then there will be maybe a manual or a toolbox. I already have the tools. They are packed somewhere. That's why I said I'm crazy because all that is there. And I'm just trying to sort out what goes into this book and the rest of the extras in the workbook or in the extra um, toolbox. That and even, Francisca, even if we omit something that should be in the book, there's yeah. no reason for us to continue to wait for you to get what may not be necessary. Just go ahead and get the book done. Just get mm-hmm. your book, just get it done. And then mm-hmm. you can start another one. And I, the more you do, look at Pamela, the more you do, the next one is going to be easier for you to do. But yeah. just don't continue to belabor, belabor with this one. Just be done. You're yeah, done. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm done this week. I know I started two weeks later, so I'm, I really, I'm really have done this in, in less than, in about four weeks now. Okay, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm just, I'm just so heavy here because I was trying to listen to you that it's enough, but I, I also wanted you to hear me out that I think I can cut out the rest of the three chapters, but I need those two. And then I may, ex I may get more books because there's no detail in some of the stories. Well, you need you do need to have a close. I don't. I didn't get a. I didn't get a full closure. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get a closure. And yeah. your closure, you're going to get. In my opinion, under my tutelage, you're mm -hmm. going to get your closure by telling me what did you want. What do you want someone to say about your book? Okay. And that's how you're going to close. That is just your summary of your book. You, the purpose. This is your your snap you aren't going to say as a result of reading this book mothers will be able to but pretty much that is what you're going to say as a result you're not going to say that but it is as a result of reading this book mothers fathers families should be able to recognize when this uh what's that word again when this entitlement is just kind of like rearing its head Mm -hmm. and when, the, when you are aware that this is taking place, these are, mm -hmm. I have outlined some things that you can do. Be in yeah. time with your children, share with mm -hmm. them, let them attend, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's, that's what's coming in there. Thank, thank you for that. And mm -hmm. I was like, uh, well, I, I was coming up with phrases like bringing the unconscious bias into consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> Or, or is that word that Lisa is that word that Lisa used incongruency, you know? Yeah. Because you have in there that it's such a powerful phrase. If it if you if it if it doesn't feel right, or if you're hurting someone, if someone is in pain, yeah, you know it is the wrong thing to do. Do yes. something with that as your closure. Okay, you can write yeah. like a full two pages on that. But you do you do have enough. You do have enough. And this is week seven. Yeah. Uh, week eight, I have nothing more. I have nothing more to say other than download Kindle direct, put it in there, send it to Kindle because you were supposed to have your cover already done, your forward already done if you were going to have one. We did all, I don't know what your platform was, Pamela, but I said get all of the things that when your book is written, you already have your dedication page. You know who you're dedicating this to. Don't right. wait to the last to do a dedication. Know who you're going to dedicate your paper, your book to. Know what your cover is going to look like. We did the heavy lifting first because right. everything else was pretty easy. That's how I was taught, and that was right. the way. And that's how Lisa, te um, you know, that's how she teaches. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, any words for? I want to say thank you so much. Pamela, it was my pleasure to have you join us today. And guys, this is what you want to be able to do. You want to be able to go to a panel and talk about your book, ask questions, have people ask questions and be able to answer. I'm happy that Pamela was able to respond to Michelle because people are going to ask you questions about whatever. Mm -hmm. And hopefully because she is an accomplished and a national be uh, bestseller, she may have some insight into whatever, but as what I what what I actually heard is, she's just like you and me. She wrote a book, and she wanted it to get done. She was at first a little like words. I don't even know how to start, but you know we just start. Okay, what any words any words for our guests? Thanks so much, Pamela. I really appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. And again, it was a pleasure being here and I'm glad you guys had me and invited me in. So thank you, Dr. Priscilla, for that. And I just encourage you to keep going, you know, get past the fears, do it anyway, because there is a message that you have that is meant for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, no one can tell your story like you. I don't care what similarities we have, but no one can tell it like you. And there's somebody waiting to hear the message from you. Mm -hmm. So I say, keep going, just get it done. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much, Pamela. Um, 
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Priscilla. Okay, guys, there is nothing more for me to print. If you have questions, I'm here. And until our next time, I am your coach, Anchors of Hope, Anchors of Hope coach, your sister in the journey. Until next time, have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.